There's something about the macabre and morbid that just keeps drawing us in. This fascination in topics that should terrify us to the point of never visiting the genre again. But here we are, taking yet again another dive into the terrifying world of analog horror. And this time we're going a lot deeper than we have before, into videos that may have been better off not seeing. Hey everyone, it's Wildman, and in today's video we're going to be taking yet again another dive into another collection of analog horror tapes. Also, side note, my hair looks a little funky today. I couldn't fix it, so I'm sorry. And this time around, we are going to be changing things up a little bit, because each video that we're going to be watching is more terrifying than the last, at least in my opinion. So if you find we watch a video that's a little bit too much, I would recommend clicking off the video, because the next one is most likely going to be a lot worse. But before we get into it, please do not forget to subscribe, as well as liking the video and commenting, brah. As always, so you know, we can get helped out over here. Also, this is making a lot of noise. Also, if you're feeling super duper cool, check out my Instagram. It's right here. It'd be very cool if you did. It's messing with my mind. My house looks different now. There are rooms I don't remember. This analog horror is the second installment in a series that we covered in our last analog horror video. In the first one, we met a person named Audrey, who was obsessed with finding this door. She eventually does, but at the cost of her own sanity. And the second installment continues the story, now revolving around Audrey's twin sister, Sarah. According to Sarah, her sister went missing a few weeks ago. Her obsession with some door got the better of her, and Sarah thinks that that's the reason that she's gone now. With this message on her answering machine being the last trace of her. Hey Sarah, I hope you're doing well. I'm having the dream again. The dream about the door. Within it, Audrey says that she's having this reoccurring nightmare about a door to the point that it's no longer in her dreams, saying that it's deteriorating her state of mind and Audrey doesn't even recognize the inside of her own home. But three weeks after Audrey went missing, Sarah received yet again another voicemail. Audrey's voice is the same, but there is something off about it. Sarah? Why aren't you answering the phone? I think I'm still in my house, but everything looks different. I have to find the door. It might be the way out. And after getting this voicemail, Sarah is obviously extremely worried for her sister because she knows that she's still missing regardless of this message. And so Sarah, desperate to find her sister, finds a book on how to summon the door that her sister was looking for. And she immediately begins this ritual without even a second thought, which is insane. And as soon as it's completed, things begin to take a turn because Sarah has welcomed something into her home. Shit! But what is strange is that this thing isn't the only thing that Sarah has invited into her home after performing the ritual. Because one night she hears knocking at the front of her door, but when she goes to see who it is, it's a man we've never seen before. His voice is off, and it seems like his soul is lost. This is that dog. What? It's you, you recognize me? No. What is your name? I still remember. Listen, you're at the wrong house. Sarah then retreats to her room and sets up a camera to make sure that nothing happens to her during the night. But when she wakes up the next morning to check the footage, she sees something that is extremely chilling because she has no recollection of what this footage is. and the following night, she doesn't even try to sleep. Noises begin to lurk the halls of her empty home. The entity is still there, watching her sleep. And so, she follows it. Wednesday night at 10. 
All right, so this next one is called Cartman's Revenge, and I know, South Park, right? Eh, how can that be terrifying? Well, you'd be surprised. The video starts off innocent enough. There's this old Tom Cruise movie playing in the background before it switches to an episode of South Park. Specifically, season eight, episode two, had to look that up, called Awesomeo. An episode where Butters is tired of Cartman playing pranks on him and tells Cartman that if he plays another prank on him, he's gonna show everyone this video that he has of him, of him dancing as Britney Spears around a Justin Timberlake cardboard cutout. Anyway, long story short, Cartman ends up playing another prank on Butters and Butters fulfills on his promise and shows everyone the tape. And the episode ends with everyone making fun of Cartman and that's that. However, in this iteration of that episode, something far darker happens as the episode continues. Because when Butters goes home that night, he sees a completely mangled version of Cartman standing in his room. And now you're thinking that this is probably just Cartman playing another prank on Butters, taking it a step further because of the footage that he leaked. But when night turns to day, it's apparent that this was much more than just a prank. Because Butters' mother finds her son still laying in bed, but his face looks like his eyes were ripped from their sockets. His face drawn in this very realistic style, bleeding everywhere. But shockingly, the video doesn't end there, and it surprisingly gets much worse. We're met with this medical report from St. John's Hospital, stating that over the past six days, over 103 children have checked into our hospital for cases of insomnia and night terrors. These cases have been so severe that some of the children have been injured by these conditions. Confused by the amount of children with these conditions, the hospital decided to find a common cause between the children with the conditions. To find this cause, the hospital has the children make drawings of what they had on their minds. And what we see isn't out of the ordinary, in fact, the drawings are pretty ordinary. But a few drawings in, and they take an ugly turn. Depictions of this slender creature screaming at the children who drew it. There was something demonic about this airing of South Park that made 103 children begin experiencing these symptoms. What plays after is footage of the inside of someone's home. Son, it's time for bed. Son, are you okay? And when the parent goes inside of the room, we can see the mutilated body of the parent's child. <coughs> This is the event that the episode was based on. Now this analog horror is very different because it does deal with very real rituals that you can perform yourself. However, I do want to make something clear, do not attempt any of these rituals because even if you don't believe in spirits, why would you risk it? Like you guys should definitely watch Talk To Me, it's pretty intense. In the movie there's this hand that lets you get possessed by a random spirit, and it could even make you do some pretty gross stuff. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. I do highly recommend it though, if you haven't seen it already. Uh, just Go watch it. But my point is, don't don't try rituals. The first one is called How to Play Hide and Seek Alone. And the gist of this one is that you're pretty much going to be playing hide and seek with a spirit. And the way that the spirit will play is that you have to give it a doll as its host. And your requirements for this ritual are that you need a stuffed doll, a sack of rice, nail clippers, hand sewing needle, red thread, a knife or scissors work too, a bathtub, salt water, and a TV. Now the way to perform the ritual is actually pretty simple. You cut open the doll and remove the stuffing, replacing it with the rice. You also have to cut off a piece of your fingernail and place it inside along with the rice. Then you sew it all back up with the red thread. 
Next, you need to fill up the bathtub with water and place the knife and salt water in your hiding spot. And after this, you have to name the doll, although it is very important not to name the doll after yourself and or any of your acquaintances or friends because that can cause it to unintentionally curse that person. And at exactly 3 a.m., you have to repeat three times, your name is the first it. After that, you have to submerge the doll in the bath water, turn off all the lights in your house, and switch on the TV. Then it's time to go to your hiding place and you count to 10. When you finish counting, open your eyes, hold your sharp tool, and return to the bathroom, to which you'll find the doll and you have to tell it, found you three times. Next, it's the doll's turn and you have to tell it that it's its turn. You have 10 seconds, go to your hiding spot and remain silent. But if 10 seconds pass and you're still not at your hiding spot, you fail the game. And when the game begins, the doll will begin to hunt for you. Now this isn't mentioned in the video, but it's also reported that you should never look back while you're going to hide because you might see the doll doing something incredibly disturbing. And this would also ruin the game. There is a do not do list, which includes do not run on the lights, lock any of the doors, including front and back, play the game with people in your home, and or leave your house. There's also this warning on a separate site that says how to perform the ritual that says, messing around with rituals like this is dangerous. They are serious rituals, not games. If you make a single mistake, then expect to meet a nasty end. You have been warned. To end the game, you have to put salt water in your mouth, and when you find the doll, you have to spray it on the doll and yell, I win, three times. Then allow the doll to get dry and burn it immediately and then discard it. <laughs> The next one is about this cursed poem that I'm not sure if a lot of you are familiar with, but essentially the poem is written in Japanese, and it is said if you recite the poem, you will die. Numerous people have claimed that nothing happened, but there were also several discussions in which the people who participated failed to return to share the outcomes. And within the video, it's the English translation of the poem, but even then, it's said that you should still never read this out loud. At the bottom, it says, we take no responsibility about what may happen if you read it out loud. So I'm just going to be reading a portion of this poem. I'm not going to be reading the whole thing because it genuinely terrifies me. So, um... So subscribe to wish me luck. The poem starts like this. Elder sister vomits blood, younger sister is breathing fire, while sweet little Tomino just spits up the jewels. All alone does Tomino go falling into that hell, a hell of utter darkness without even flowers. And the rest of this poem I'll have Google read it, but if you don't want to hear the rest, um, you can skip to right here. All alone does Tomino go falling into that hell, a hell of utter darkness without even flowers. Is Tomino's big sister the one who whips him? The purpose of the scourging hangs dark in his mind, not just on some empty whim. His flesh pierced with blood red pins, they serve as hellish signposts for sweet little Tamino. The last one in this video is about the enigmatic pop-up window, aka the Red Room. The Red Room curse is a Japanese internet legend about a pop-up that appears on victims' screens. And supposedly whoever is unlucky enough to receive this pop-up on their computer will meet a horrific end. This is a pop-up and supposedly there is no way to get rid of it. Your screen would start to fill up with the names of the previous victims, however no one knows what happens after that. The tape then changes frames, and then we're told about an incident that took place in June 2004. It involved a brutal murder of a 12-year-old schoolgirl by an 11-year-old classmate referred to as Girl A at an elementary school in Sabu, Nagasaki. And that according to reports, Girl A had the Red Room Curse animation and had the movie cached on her computer before the murder. Lacey's wardrobe at first glance appears to be this fun children's game, in the same ballpark as cool math games like Run 3 and Papa's Pizzeria. But diving deeper into these videos, it leads us down a rabbit hole that I'm not sure a lot of you guys will want to go down. Because this game with this innocent appearance couldn't be farther from that. We start off with Lacey introducing you to the game, 
Lacey has a busy day today. In the game, she will attend a picnic in the park, then in the afternoon she must go shopping, finally she will have a date with the cutest guy. But there is only one problem, she has no idea what she's going to wear. And so it's up to the player to put together an outfit for Lacey to wear on all of these occasions. And from this it establishes that this is a game made for primarily preteens most likely, and the game is just that. You get to pick from a variety of different clothes and even hairstyles. But after choosing your second outfit, the game is interrupted by a phone call that says, Lacey, Lacey, did you see my stacks, Lacey? I can wait to meet up, Lacey. And after that, the gameplay continues, but we can hear someone breathing over the gameplay. Lacey makes her way to the mall, but the game continues to glitch out and says, Please help. He's going to kill me. Lacey, upon returning home, starts to hear knocks at her door. There is a gift on your doorstep. And at first, it looks like a box of chocolates, but upon opening the box, there are what looks like some sort of meat like guts or intestines. The stalker then calls again. Lacey saying with text on screen, please don't make me go outside. But there's still a minute left in this video, and unfortunately the player decides to make Lacey go outside. Which in itself is extremely dark, considering the player has heard all of the creepy stalker's voicemails, and knows that this stalker is dangerous. But Daisy is commanded to go outside by the player anyway. Daisy telling the player, what have you done? What follows is the sounds of Daisy being killed by the man who was stalking her. There are flashes of her leg being ripped off and her torso missing her arms and legs. However, I will not be showing this for obvious reasons. And at the end of the video, we can see the stalker. I ate her remains so that we will be together forever. I love you, Lacey. The last one that we're going to be diving into is called Gateway to the Mind, an analog horror that is based on this art display which is about a man who lathers himself in clay and continues to puncture holes into himself, liquid coming out of the clay mask. Now this video was purely made for artistic purposes to display art, however these videos add a disturbing backstory to this already creepy display, turning it into something that is guaranteed to make you lose sleep. Within the tape, it states that the gateway to the mind is going to be a sensory deprivation experiment. And for those of you who are unfamiliar to what that is, the form of sensory deprivation that I'm familiar with is by placing yourself in a tank filled with water and allowing no light to enter that tank, essentially giving you the feeling of weightlessness and deprive you of any senses while you're in there. I know Red and Link tried one of these super long ago. They both came out like it was the trippiest thing ever. I mean, look at Red's face. Because the sensory deprivation tank can have some pretty weird side effects on the human mind. Not long term, but just while you're in there. Some people even report seeing faces of loved ones while they're in there, or people that they've never even met. And the craziest thing about sensory deprivation tanks is that you can try it yourself, there's probably one nearby where you live. However, there is a catch, because you're only allowed to be in these things for a very short amount of time, because spending hours in one of these would definitely start to have some negative psychological effects, which is what this video is going to explore. Our goal for this experiment is to use sensory deprivation to perceive the presence of God. Our theory states that the five senses cloud our perception of the otherworldly, and without them, humans could establish a connection with God through thoughts. However, instead of depriving the person of their senses using a sensory deprivation tank, the way that they do it is very messed up. 
For this experiment, our test subject was purged of all his senses so he could not see, hear, taste, smell, or feel. Our test subject had no possible way to sense the outside world and was left with only his thoughts. Meaning that they stripped this human being of all of their senses and they have no possible way of getting them back ever. But during the experiment, they're going to be monitoring his brainwaves, looking out for any spikes in activity. On day one, things are fairly okay, I mean, nothing really happens, but when day two comes around, it shows us the audio and the video captured from the subject. <laughs> he can't make out any words, but the lack of sense is starting to make the subject extremely erratic. And the test facilitators interpret this as, quote, the audio and visual monitors suggest that our test subject has reached contact with otherworldly beings. We're one step closer to God. Now, I'm not entirely sure who is conducting this experiment, but they seem to be pretty deranged. I mean, these are not the sounds of someone who is okay. And for them to be interpreting this as he's getting closer to God is just really messed up. But regardless, the test continues for another two days. On day three, the subject is louder this time around, screams of terror emitting from the recording. According to the audio and visual monitoring, our test subject has made contact with the damned in hell. Contact with God is in sight. The tape then glitches out and we begin to hear the inner voice of the test subject. And what he says is really disturbing. I can't see, I can't feel, I can't smell, I can't taste. The voices are so loud, their screams are louder. The final day of the experiment is underway and the subject's voice is completely gone at this point. Having exhausted his vocal cords to the point of completely damaging them, the test subject's face is also completely gone from what it once was. The subject also ends up dying, but before he did, he had one final thing to say. But yeah, that pretty much does it to let me know. Would you spend some time in a sensory deprivation tank? There's probably one nearby. You should go. I'm probably going to go too. And um, I don't know. It seems pretty cool in there. Also, huge thank you to my ultimate tiers, Kareem Arellano, Knight98, and K-Pop Lover X3. Also, if you want to join the channel, it's only $1.99. So go ahead and join. You get early access to videos. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. It's always super great. And uh, yeah, see you later. Love ya. Bye.